you are watching Redicon. The thecal sac is surrounded anteriorly by vertebral bodies and discs, while posteriorly by the posterior elements including facet joints. Narrowing of the central canal or thecal sac can be secondary to developmental or acquired causes. Two of the most common acquired causes are disc bulge or disc herniation and facet joint osteoarthritis. The disc herniation can affect the central canal, later recesses or exit foramina, while facet joints with effusion and ligament inflammation hypertrophy can also impact on the thecal sac or exit foramina. Other causes for central canal stenosis or spinal stenosis are synovial cysts, like a ganglion cyst arising from the synovial or facet joints, disc cysts or neurofibromas. Schmoll's nodes or intravertebral disc herniations can be congenital or acquired and describe herniation of the disc material into the end plate of the vertebral bodies. When these are large, these can cause significant edema and symptoms of back pain, as seen on this case in which you can see two superior end plates have got herniated disc material and Schmoll's node with suggestion of high signal change around these. In particular, the lower Schmoll node is much bigger with, with the associated signal changes in most of the vertebral body and has got higher chance of being symptomatic. Now let's look at this case. On the left side, fat saturated T2 weighted images demonstrate abnormal signal of L3 and L4 vertebral bodies along with obliteration of the disc space. Significant edema in both vertebral bodies suggest marked edematous change which is further confirmed on the T1 where marrow signal of both vertebral body has been replaced. You can also see epidural space abnormality. On the right side you can see post contrast images in sagittal and coronal plane which demonstrates significant post contrast enhancement in the disc as well as suggestion of epidural enhancing tissue and epidural abscess. Further you can see enhancement going into both psoas muscles with sorry psoas abscesses bilaterally. This is a case of L3 L4 discitis. A dilemma in the imaging of possible discitis is end plate degenerative changes. Discitis is essentially inflammatory phenomena resulting in high T2 weighted signal while reduced T1 weighted signal, which can also be seen in inflammatory type of modic, like modic 1 changes, which is also higher T2 signal and low T1 signal due to inflammation and edema. IV contrast administration makes it easier to look for discitis, but for those cases in which we cannot give IV contrast, it can be challenging to differentiate between modic type 1 changes and discitis. This video is presented in collaboration with Radicon Institute of Radiology. You are welcome to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell for updates. For more modules in radiology CMEs, please visit our website www.radicon.org.